on the 13th of October 2016 13th of October 2016 that is when my life has changed so this girl remember I, I had little profit at that time this girl uh, she she came to my room right and we had a conversation we talked and I was complaining as to how she has changed. I was complaining as to how I love her, but she's no longer giving me punani, she's no longer giving me the attention she, that she used to give me and, and so forth, you know? And she, she was crying, you know? She was um, emotional. We were having that emotional talk on the 13th of October, 2016 and she told me how much i'm 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 less of a man you know um in a way how much i'm basically useless uh, because at that time we, we we stopped using protection meaning that i was entering meet to meet you know how it is when you are in a relationship with a person for quite a long time you start trusting each other and so forth so i was hitting it raw at that time so she raised concerns that what if i fall pregnant now how will you take care of your baby i didn't have answers for that so her points were useful basically she reminded me how useless i am how less of a man i am how she's much better and deserves better you know and one of the reasons i used to sell her dreams like during the progress of the relationship i used to sell her dreams that baby girl one day i will buy your phone i will take you out on a vacation just after i've taken her out on the the first one you know and whenever i would have money to do those things i would take it to forex so that's what used to make her mad she could see that there's something that I'm doing with the money, you know? So she was expressing her feelings, how I used to play with her, promising her things. And she was right. She was right. I was promising her things. But instead of doing those things, I was actually investing in Forex and losing the money. And there was no way I could tell her about it because she was going to tell me that Forex is a scam just like, how everybody is saying forex is a scam i mean i'm referring to poor people right now how they think mentality wise so it's fine uh, she ended things with me on the 13th of october 2016 she broke up with me and she told me that she can't do this anymore i'm not the guy for her now remember I've experienced break, uh, heartbreak before, but I felt like the one that I was going through was a bit too much. Like it was a matter of life and death. It was worse than the one that I've experienced in 2013. It was worse. So I was like, okay, you're breaking up with me. She's like, yes. And I asked her, I actually, I didn't ask her. I begged her, I begged her that please don't leave me. Please don't leave me. If you leave me, it's over for me. I'm going to kill myself. She said, you know what? You can decide to leave. You can kill yourself. It's fine. You know? And I'm like, please, girl, don't leave me. You see, you see when you're begging a girl, a guy begging a girl, crying, literally I was crying. I still can't believe I was crying for a girl. Me, crying. But I was at that time. So I was crying. Please don't leave me. But either way, she left me, you know. She left me. And it's one pain. Basically, that was the last pain. Ever since from that moment till today. That was the last pain I've ever had because of a girl. And I told myself that I'm never ever going to feel that pain again. It's not nice because that type of a pain 
leads to depression and that type of a depression leads to suicide you know i don't really blame people who get dumped and they commit suicide at some point because we don't know how they feel about this people or this type of a person so i accompany her accompanied her to her room on the way throughout the way imagine they dumped me i still have the nerve to accompany her because it was a bit dark i wanted to make sure that she arrives safe i accompanied her throughout the way i was begging her please don't leave me please don't leave me you see there's a saying that my tears don't just go to the ground for nothing i think maybe that was my break point when I got to her place, after making sure that she arrived safely, I asked her, don't leave me. Either way, she was leaving me. One thing that I asked from her was the last kiss. The last kiss. Remember, previously I've asked for the last kiss. They gave it to me. I managed to move on two years later. It took me almost two years to move on. Now I'm asking for the last kiss again from another girl. Now this simply means it's going to take me four years to move on. So we kissed for the last time and tears were just all over my, 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 my face. And if it was now, you'd swear that I had Corona the way my, I had the running nose and all that, like a small kid. You know, when you're crying, you even have running nose, even though you don't have flu. That was me at that time, you know, but that, that's life guys. Hey, that's life. That's life, you know? And after that, I went back to my room, right? 13th of October, I went back to my room. So when I got to my room, I, I, I told myself that I'm going to make sure that I get successful with this Forex thing. Then I traded. I had about 5,000, 6,000 somewhere there. I traded AUD and I lost everything. I lost everything. Now, imagine after getting dumped, after getting dumped, you are trading so that you can make money. So that you can make yourself feel better and you're losing i lost again and there guys i wonder if i've been thinking about suicide ever since things don't go my way in life ne? but that was the right time to do it honestly that was the right time to do it but now problem was that uh, i'm a coward you know i just didn't have the nerve but that was the right time for me to just end my life because I had to go face my parents that I lied to them for four years. My mom was probably going to have a stroke. My dad was probably going to have a heart attack. You know, they were probably going to disown me if I were to do that. You know, so the only way for me, because I felt like I was living for this girl, was to end my life. Right? So, after blowing my account, I, 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 I didn't eat for a week. A week, I was not eating anything. They say that Jesus survived 40 days. I've survived 7 days without eating. What I was eating initially, it was snacks. Like just, you see snacks and drinking water. Snacks, drinking water. Now, the reason why I was not eating was not because I did, uh, there was no food at that time. There was little food to eat. The only problem was that I didn't want food. You know, when you are ahead, you don't even want food. You know, I, I, I didn't eat for like seven days. My brother, Kuto, he was there for me. He could literally, in the middle of nowhere, when I'm sleeping with him occasionally, he would switch on the light and he would find me like this. You see, when middle of the night, it's dark in the room. And then you're sleeping with a person. And then when you would switch on the light, the person is, is like this. Tears all over. That was me. For like every day, crying. Every day, crying. Crying for her. Now, I think... 
If only she knew the kind of pain that I was in, she would have came back. But I don't think she knew the kind of pain that I was in because I was unable to talk to anyone about it at that time, right? I'm only confident to talk about it now because there's nothing anybody can do. You, you know? Now, I, I, I made a phone call to my mom and I forgot what was the lie this time. But my mom gave me 1,000 rents. It's like these things, they are connected. When she gave me the 1,000 rents, I lied to her, obviously, but I don't know what was the reason, but it has something to do with school. She told me that this is my last money, Hopoto. After this, I'm no longer giving you anything. So Linda, initially, I knew that this is the last money. This is like the last money. I funded the account with 1,000. If there's one thing in common that I've always had, it's not listening. Hey, now I don't listen, man. Hey, now I don't listen. Yes, sis. Because even after losing so much, I still didn't give up on this thing. I still went in. You know, going back to the same thing that hurts you is like going back to an ex that's been abusing you. It's like, I don't know if it's stupidity or it's just ignorance or what, but I didn't listen. I went back, deposited the money. It was about $60. Now, people, from that moment when I was trading, I was not trading to, to, to make money. No, at that time. I was trading to make sure that I get successful just so I could get back at my ex. Just so I could be successful so that I can be better than that guy that he's hanging with. So this takes me back to what I said when I said my success has everything to do with love. So if it was not because of that heartbreak, I wouldn't have pushed beyond the limit. Now from that moment onwards, 24 hours almost, I would sleep like maybe for like 2 to 3 hours. Almost all the time, I would be on my computer looking at the forex graph, not entirely trading. It was like I, I, I drank energy booster. Now I was angry. I was not trading. I was angry. Angry at her that I'm going to show her that I will make it. Keep in mind, I didn't know that I was going to make it. But I, was, I had that anger. It was not even about believing or having faith. I was angry that I'm going to show this girl. The only thing which was in my mind when I opened the trade was I'm going to teach this girl a lesson. I'm going to teach this girl a lesson. So she was part of my pushovers, the main pushover, you know. And that taught me something in life that sometimes the main thing that hurts you you can actually use it to become successful. Let your situation, the situation that you're in right now in your family, the abuse, the poverty, whatever, let that be a reason why you push harder. You understand? Don't let that be the reason why you give up on life on its own. Let that be the reason why you push harder. I've pushed and I didn't push to make myself a better guy. I pushed to prove it to her that I can make it. Everything that I was doing was about her. Now, from that point, I started making profit. Now, here is the thing. Whenever I would make 5,000 rents, remember now I was purely trading fundamental, but I didn't know or it didn't have a name. It didn't have a name as yet. It was not one minute strategy. It was just a strategy that I was using at that time. I would... Uh, make 5,000, withdraw, 4,000, withdraw, 10,000, withdraw, 15,000, withdraw. Everything that I was doing was withdrawing. And at that time, ne, I was, because I was doing everything out of anger, I was not even aware that I was actually winning. Like, I, did, I was not even aware that, fuck, this is the time for me to celebrate. I didn't have time for that. I was angry. I was angry. So I kept on pushing. November. When it was time to write exams in 2016, eh, uh, I went to, to school to... Actually, yeah, it was early November, I think. I went to school 
to fetch my timetable. Now on the timetable, the timetable will tell you the subjects which you qualify to write for, right? So out of the five subjects, I've qualified to write for two. Instead of writing for those two subjects, I tiered the timetable. Remember, the timetable is a ticket for you to enter into an exam room. So I tiered the timetable like this to show that fuck school. I'm not going back. I'm not writing any exam. I kept on pushing, making money. Now, here's the thing. I never changed my lifestyle. I never changed my lifestyle. People around me never noticed that this guy is making money out of Forex. You know, that is why even today, people still say I don't look like I have money, which is true. It's because I've never looked like I have money. It's because I don't need to prove myself to you. Who the fuck are you? Where were you when I was poor? If I was able to have money and still look the same, what stops me from having money now and still look the same? I mean, why must I wear Gucci so that you can respect me, dog? <laughs> if you respect me, you'll respect me out of the real person that I am. If you don't respect me, for tech. I'm just that type of a guy now. It's like whether you come in or go, or whether you're coming or going, it doesn't really matter, dog. Doesn't really matter. Now, uh, December. December, it's almost approaching like almost three months uh, of the relationship, right? Uh, December, it's time to go home. When it was time to go home early December, I told my parents that, you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm, I will be writing a re-exam. Re-exam is when you wrote an exam and you didn't pass well, then they give you a chance to write again. So I told them that. But I knew that around on the 16th of December, around that time, there were events that I needed to trade, right? So that's why I was still that side. Now, at that time, I've had my niggas. At that time, uh, Kuto didn't know uh, anything about trading. Uh, Vincent didn't know that I was even trading. He was driving a taxi somewhere in Whitbank at that time. So he was, yeah, his father disowned him at that time. Uh, Fosh, uh, he was failing in UJ. He didn't know that I was trading. So there were two guys, two guys that I opened to. Uh, that was my roommate and this other uh, friend of, um, of mine. So meaning that now I was, it was like the three of us in a way. So I was teaching them how I'm making money. So I started with my roommate. I showed him this thing and all that. And then, yeah, I showed him how they work. I showed them how it works. I mean, so December, I was, I was, I was trading, showing, trading in their presence. They were seeing me trade fairly, you know, so they were interested and all that, you know, so I've kept them close. I'm that type of a guy who goes down with his old niggas. I don't do new friends, by the way. I don't, I don't really do new friends. If you are new and you're my friend, consider yourself fucking lucky because I always go up with my old niggas. Now, uh, when we went home Vele, uh, December, I got home Vele. You know what? I'm feeling myself, right? Parents are happy to see me, but they are worried because uh, I've lost weight. Remember, I went through breakup and I've lost weight. Every It's like every time I go through breakup, I lose weight. So I lost weight. My mom was not happy about it. But now I was happy because I knew that I was, I was on a recovery phase, you know. Now, when I was spending my December in 2016, Ladies and gentlemen, from that last 1,000 deposit that I've made, I've already had almost 93,000. That is like almost 100.